Satan to step over and come on. 2023, question that I pondered this week was this, how did Christians get where we are today? I think we're where we are today by refusing to be a Christian dissident while remaining silent and letting people make us shameful. I think that seems to be the thing together uh, that we have to see. Um, Stay in your place. Be quiet. We want to hear from you. We'll squeeze your head. We don't want to hear anything from the church. The church has been made to be belittled and unempowered, and you guys just hush and be quiet. If you don't get this big idea of the message, it is this. We have a message, and our message has not been taken from us. As Christians, we have the cookie. The world can discredit that, and they can say, I don't want to be part of that. That's great. But I think most of our problem is, number one, there's two reasons. Number one, our problem is we've misunderstood what the church is. So I'm going to several times in the message, you're going to see this on a slide. Do you see the problem? I don't want an answer then. I'll actually pause at, the, at some point here. I want you to watch the use of the word church as we go through this. And I want you to see if you can see what the problem is. Number one, a misuse of the word church. Number two, we're at a point where not only was Christ right, <laughs> was he ever wrong, but when he says that the world will hate you. See, we've had long times of, of great history in the United States, and we've got this false impression that we're the good guys. I want you to know you are not the good guys, but we're the ones that have the good news of Jesus Christ, and that's what is important. First of all, by using the word dissident, I used that a couple of weeks ago, and I want to give it to you again with a definition. A dissident is a person who opposes official policy, particularly when the official policy is antichrist and non-Christian. A dissident refuses to continue to what? Remain silent and denying your commission to preach Christ and him crucified. That is the message. Christ and him crucified. If they don't want to hear it, that's fine. That's their constitutional right not to listen. But I have a constitutional right to make sure truth is said and lies are not enforced. Number two, we've been a dissident refuses to continue to remain shameful and being shamed into silence by the spirit of the Antichrist. Number three, a dissident refuses to continue to remain disobedient in refusing to speak truth. One of the books that I hope some of you will get and read this year, We Will Not Be Silenced by Irvin Lutzer. Very good book, a good man. And I want to read just a quote from his book. Those who hold to biblical teachings about marriage appear to be forced into cultural. Notice I've given you the root word of cultural is a cult. You understand that, don't you? Into cultural irrelevance. And proof of this is defining church attendance as the, as the younger generation leaves the church. Secular. Now, he doesn't believe that. But that's what he's quoting there in the book. Proof of this is declining church attendance. Younger generations leaves the church. Secularists want to dominate. That which was one time condemned must now simply be tolerated. That's not enough. It must be celebrated. And that which was one time celebrated must be contemned. We were celebrated as the church of God. People even recommended their kids to come to church. You couldn't have an Awana program with all these kids coming out of the woodwork, right? Remember those days? This we've got to understand that those days have changed in the sense God has not changed, but this world has changed, and particularly the United States of America has changed to the point 
that I question whether we have any, any representation of godly leadership in our governments today. Dr. Lutzer is looking at the answer when he made those statements where he said those who hold the biblical teachings about marriage appear to be forced into a cultural irrelevancy. And proof of this is declining church attendance as the younger generations leave the church. Do you see the problem? Let's look at another example. Oliver B. Green, who I grew up going to church every Sunday morning, listening to the radio as Oliver B. Green was preaching on our way to go to church. And my dad always seemed to pastor an hour away from where we lived for years. And we'd listen to this man's voice, a godly man, but he had the roughest voice. This is Oliver B. Green coming to you from, you know, it was hard to listen to him, but boy, did he preach. And he pastored, and he made this statement in 1939. I have it on the screen, and there's a photograph of him. It will take more than a softball team and a hot dog smothered with onions to keep people in church. Get them saved, and then they'll want to come to church. And then Identity Magazine, which is one of the podcasts that I like, here's what he makes this statement, and I believe this is where we made a wrong turn in the church and it happened in the 1960s most of the lord's workers in our post-truth and we're in a post-truth top forget about post-christianity we're post-truth we're beyond speaking truth culture devote their lives to sharing the gospel to gain a paycheck professional christian leaders and the church was willing to sit back and say hey we got a staff to handle that and they were happy as long as they kept giving the money. COVID arrives and churches are floundering today. And they're floundering because the professionals can't be kept any longer because they don't have the money to pay them. Has that really changed anything when you're thinking of all of it? And then in the last two years, 2020 to 2022, I'm quoting now myself here where I say humanism is replacing Christ-centered teaching of the Bible. I think we all would agree to that. But Olive Tree Ministries, I love Jan Markell and their ministry. She wrote an article entitled Apostasy in the Church. And here's what she said. In the last two years, thousands, and she means of churches, have gone woke, seeker-sensitive, and more. Social justice has replaced salvation. Many teach that the church will make the world a better place, even perfect. The sheep are trying to find, she believes this, the sheep are trying to find a solid church, one that talks about the issues of the day and Bible prophecy. Many churches want to tell people they can have their best life now. Let me go to the next screen. If God allows Cornerstone Church to go forward, I want Cornerstone to be that church that Jan's talking about. I'm not talking about greatness in size. I'm talking about greatness in duty. A solid church. One that talks about issues of the day and biblical prophecy. And I've added, and it's all around Bible teaching. It's in the word. We don't have to go humanism on ourselves either. And then I like this quote. I'm going to turn around. It's too small on my paper. The world is screaming lies. The church is whispering the truth. So scared to offend people while the world is offending God. And I think that's the crux of the whole thing right there. Every way possible, I'd like for us to have some way to meet, reach out to our four counties that's represented in our church membership. That's Pickens, our main place, Gilmer. Dawson and Cherokee, anyone outside of those counties? And Facebook, we're able to reach every week. These are the states that we're reaching. Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Virginia, Arkansas, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, even Ohio, Bill. Minnesota and Texas. I mean, think about this little bitty church here in Pickens County, but we have regular vi listeners to that. In fact, I get emails from five of them almost every week. What did you mean by this? You know, I mean, it's good stuff. 
we're reaching a lot of people that are not going to church because of age and health and other situations going on. But they're faithful, faithful in listening to this. We're reaching out. It's important. The truth can be given. And there's great ministries in this country that are getting the word out. They really are. I, I don't think enough can be said about David Jeremiah and what we experienced during our four Sundays here in, in December. It's being given out. There's a group that I like to follow also. It's called Prophecy. And here's what they say is their total objective. Now think about what this says. Our objective is to awaken the bride of Christ. We encourage you to dedicate special time of prayer for the purpose of praying for people who think they are born again, but are not. They've been handed this easy believism over the years that says nothing about who Christ is in repentance. It's easier to join a church than it is to become a member of the civic organization or a club. They simply say, come on in just as you are. Well, that sounds good. We even have a hymn that says, come just as you are, but that's to a sinner. It's not coming and we'll put you on the board tomorrow. If you like us, because of be part of us. No mention of Christ as Savior, the gospel message, or repentance. But Jesus made a, a very startling statement when he said, in Matthew 7, 14, few there be that find it. But if you would listen to some, hey, Jesus understands. You just come on and be part of us. There's a big void there in what the Bible says. Satan has a strategy. But we need in 2023, I think, to forget his strategy. We know what his strategy is. But here's the problem. They're interesting. They are not interested in silencing us. They want to destroy the church. You understand that? They've already accomplished in silencing most of Christianity in the United States. Now they want to destroy it. Our country is worse today than the people in Nineveh of Jonah's day. Now you can do your own research on that. They were bad people. So bad that Jonah couldn't believe that God would even send him over there and tell them they could repent. And I think some of us get that idea in our mind too. If Jane Fonda gets saved, I don't want to go to heaven. Have you ever heard that before? <laughs> well, you'd have to be in my era to, to understand that. But I don't mean that. She can go. <laughs> I'm more concerned about God's mercy for people. And that's the whole message of Jonah. The whole message of Jonah was God was merciful and it made Jonah mad. Jonah didn't want to go because it was a message of repentance to people he hated. God, they, he, he was willing to be silent and not even go. So he went a different way. And so what did God do? He caused the great storm. The ship is sh going everywhere. They figured it out. The lost people figured it out. That, hey, he's the reason. What can we do? Jonah says, throw me over. So now you have a suicidal believer who doesn't want the message to get to the people. Just kill me. But they threw him over. And then God had prepared a great fish for him. Swallowed him up. And now he has his recovery time where he has to have a Jesus meeting or a God meeting with God in the belly of a whale or great fish. And then he becomes vomit. At the point of vomit, he's willing to go. And God uses these words, get up and go. Get up and go. And so he goes. And he goes and presents the message that God wanted for the people of Nineveh. And he was not enthusiastically delivering it. He did it. And then the people heard the message of God and repented. And they changed their way. There was a true conversion in their lives. And that made him mad. That made him mad. Do you see where Jonah is in this? But understand this. The message of Jonah is that God is merciful. And I don't think even though with us being pre-trib, mid-trib, and, and definitely fundamental in our scripture belief, we should not put a date and say, well, the evangelistic work is over. We just wait till Jesus pops in. 
We've got a job to do until that happens. I want to repeat what Dr. Lutzer said and see if we can figure out the problem. He said those who hold a biblical teaching about marriage appear to be forced into cultural irrelevancy. And proof of this is declining church attendance as the younger generation leaves the church. What is the problem? Does anyone see the problem? Okay, Clifton. Okay, Barry. Okay. Okay, and all of you are right in the area. Bill, being a Yankee, comes closer <laughs> of what I'm saying. Notice how I've highlighted church, and sometimes I haven't highlighted church. Okay, William, tell me what I'm after. You're the deep thinker. Not there? I'm a poor, I'm a poor teacher then. Here it is. Next screen. We have confused the church with the church. Right, exactly. The definition of church. My definition of the church is what you see. You don't see it there yet. Hang in with me. You will. Get your act together, Rucker. Okay. Matthew 16, here's what Jesus said. I'm skipping this and go on over to the next slide under verse 17. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, You said it right. And then in verse 18, but also say to you, Peter, on this rock I will build my church. That's the ecclesia, the called out believers. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Do not look at the local church to see how the church is doing. Does that make sense? We've gotten so professional and so self-focused as church does that we're relegating how the church of God is based on what's happening at Cornerstone Jasper, Georgia. We drive by the other churches and we see a thousand cars. I had one of our members call this week, said, want to know what is going on at such and such church. I can't get up the highway. They got the road blocked. I said, I have no idea. But maybe you should stay and clean up the elephant poop after it's over. Here's the thing. We have relegated the church definition to humanism and finances and management to the point that we've forgotten what the church is. It is the called out assembly of God. It doesn't make up Cornerstone. It makes up Cornerstone Church because we're part of it, but it is not Cornerstone Church. It's not. It's what God said, I'm building. And gates of hell, Satan himself is not going to stop what I'm building. God knows what he's doing. He's calling people into the kingdom of God. Some are believing, some are not. Some are trusting, some are not. But we must still get the message out. Jonah went there. And once he got the message out, repentance took place. Now, the message the church, the local churches are getting out is what? You said it first, Bill. Come to church. 
and we've got to have something ready for them when they get here, right? Isn't that what you hear? We've got to have the choir. We've got to have the best praise team. Who cares who's sleeping with who? Just so they sing pretty. You see what I'm saying? We've got to have the best performing pastor there is. Fuck says God. You, you've got to have people playing the game. And that is called what? Participation? No. What is it called? Entertainment. And it's also, I can't think of the word. It starts with a P as well. It's where you're faking it. Anyone help me out? Posturing. You're performing. That's it. You're just performance. Masquerade. Oh, that sounds worse. <laughs> but it's true. See, I would rather, <laughs> you don't believe me, but I can bring the church name up to you and I can have you call the deacon board. I was given an offer four years ago by a church that would blow your socks off. And they sent two of their people here to hear me preach. And they called me afterwards, wanted me to come to their citadel and preach a church of 1,200 people, a package of $200,000. I said, no. Huh? I didn't know you was in my church, first of all. You lied to me when you came. And I wouldn't be interested in being your pastor for anything. Why? First thing has to do, everybody has to re resign from their committees. I will not pastor a committee-ran church. I don't care how big it is. So you don't want me. And the guy quickly says, no, we don't. What the, you know how they wanted me? They wanted me because of my MBA from a real school, the University of Tennessee. They thought they needed management in the pulpit and management in the control of their church. And that's why they were out looking for MBAs that were pastors. And I mistakenly put my name on a list many years ago. Stating that. Do you see the point? We decide that we have to have something for the people to come to church. And they're spending millions of dollars right now. A church in this community is looking for a pastor. Because they need somebody that's going to be able to ring the bells and make everyone feel good so they can build their church back up. No, 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 no. no. You had a good man. You didn't want to hear what he had to say. Do you understand? I am thrilled to be the pastor of this small church in Jasper, Georgia. And if God in the building of his church decides to trust us with some raw material and put in their heart to come. Thank you so much for coming, Billy. <laughs> then we, and how many of you have been here less than a year? You're it. Okay. Less than two years. Yeah, a few more. Now get this. I want you to understand. God builds his church and we want him to bring people to us. At the same time, we want to see people saved in our community and come in. I do hope that that uh, that she's right in her statement that people are actually looking for churches that preach the gospel and relevant for what's happening today and will call problems problems. I hope that's true. But what I see more often than not, people staying in lesbian, gay, loving churches because they love the building. And not Christ. That's sad. But they've got to hear the message of Jesus Christ. This next slide. This is where the contortionist comes in on this message. This is where, in the middle of the week, God put Jonah on my heart. <laughs> Jonah? But you've already seen a few things of what it means to be a Jonah going into a place you don't want to go. You've preached the message, just let God do it. So here I hope you'll be able to see this a little bit better. This is a notice that came in this week. It says that demographic shift. United States Christians moving from liberal to conservative states. Please know. <laughs> Stay where you are. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Build a church in your living room. Bring people in to hear truth. If you're not a speaker or teacher, I've got some suggestions of people you can put on the TV and they can listen to in your home. Stay where you are. Grow a church. Notice the church is blue there. 
And that means just grow a small community of believers there in your home. In Nineveh, we speak out. Speak God's message of truth. Now, on this slide, where are you in this slide? Are you, do you picture yourself in a, in a boat and the storm is tossing you back and forth? Or has God already thrown you into judgment and you're dealing with him personally at this moment in time in your life? Or have you been spit up on the seaside? You become the vomit that God promised in his word, by the way. And you've been cast out on the sea. Is one of those where you are today? I'm not asking for you to comment, just to think. Next screen. This is Nineveh. Up at the top right, you see Nineveh. It was Assyrians. They hated God. They hated everything. And they hated Jews. And they persecuted Jews. And this is where God sent Jonah. I want you to understand, we don't have to go to Nineveh. We're not on the boat. We're not in the fish. We may think we're in the fish. We may think that we're vomit on the ground. But let me tell you what the Bible has already said for us. That we are in the land. And there's Georgia. Who's going to the soup. Not Super Bowl, which is going to the national champions, right? So we know the whole world knows. Well, Southeast knows for sure. We are where God has placed us. God has commissioned us and put us in a place where we can speak out. Now, I will say there's a certain message being spoken just by this building being here and a sign out on the road. That is some testimony. But unlike Jonah, don't be concerned about the actions of God or his people that he hated. We've got to watch it. I do not like anything about the Democratic Party, and I don't care much about the Republicans either. I'll just tell you that. I think they're all liars. Can't trust them. They're all self-serving multimillionaires who are elitists who think they can help old Ronnie out. I have a strong dislike for both parties. I have a strong dislike for baby killers. And I do not believe any true Christian can be a Democrat and know what the platform is about. Baby killers. But let God, through the Holy Spirit, show judgment or let him show mercy. It's not my job. But it is my job to speak out truth. Now, let me tie the ribbon to this real quick. The angel of the Lord said to the Laodicea church. Now, we came to a pretty well agreement, I think, in this church that we're living in the Laodicea church age. If there's church ages, we're in the last one, right? Here's what he said about them. These things says the amen. This is Jesus speaking. The faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. The only place this word is used in the New Testament is right there. Now, it's also in 1 Peter, but that's just quoting an Old Testament statement. And then you go back to Jonah and the whale, or the Jonah and the great fish and the vomit. What happened to Jonah has happened to where you and I live right now. The church age today, God does not see in approval at all. He says it is vomit. But take it for what it is. If we're already here and we're going to stand true to the word of God and speak out, we're not the vomit. We're in the middle of a church that's vomit. Now, having vomited recently... Let me tell you a few things about vomit. You don't do it on purpose. Number two, it stinks. Number three, if you're not fast enough to get out of the truck, you're going to clean up the truck. Anybody want to buy a red Toyota this morning? It's clean. It's clean. Do you understand, guys? 
what God is saying to this church age. Why are we down in the dumps about the church? The church of God is being built and he's building it. The gates of hell will not prevail. And I'm not talking about Cornerstone Church. I'm talking about what we make up the church of the living God. So we go out as Jonah's commissioned to tell the truth and stand for truth. They can call it a post-truth generation all they want. But it's not going to be true of me. And that's the deal we've got to make in 2023. It's not going to be me. Stand for truth. The next slide. People are not leaving the church. Although that's what the quote was. People are leaving the church. The youth are not coming to church. No, they're not coming here. We're birthing our own. <laughs> but get this, guys. It's not about who comes through those doors. It's about who comes through the blood of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that are born into the kingdom of God. Those that are saved, born by the Holy Spirit of God, drawing them to him. How many of them we collect here in this building is immaterial. I got news for you. The church of the living God is healthy and it's really doing well. And then I read stuff happening in Iran. The greatest revival of all time. Muslims coming to Lord Jesus Christ. Jews, more Christians coming to Israel now than ever before. Do you realize he did not form a committee and ask us what we thought about it? God's still on the throne. So I'm not going to look left and right and decide how the church is. People are not leaving the church. If they're leaving the church, they never was part of it. Don't look at the local meeting place where Christ followers are known to attend and measure the church by the church. Because we have put a wrong definition. No one, and to keep this in mind, this is the most sobering thought that I got out of this book too. No one is fooling God. This is our McTactus book on a letter to the church. He, God, knows precisely what we believe by the way we live our lives. We will stand for truth. We will not confirm a lie by remaining silent. I don't know what, to, I mean, guys, would you have believed 2022 being what it was? I mean, just the manifold, landmark decisions by the devil and his crew of what they did in 2022 and 2021 and 2021 and 20. And here we are at 23. What could happen? Anything can happen. But we've got to have in our mind, we're going to be Christian. We are members of his church. And we're going to have the message to present to people. I think it's almost like being an Islamic country today. If you're going to witness to someone, you do it one on one. You do not try to witness to two unsaved people at the same time in Georgia. Anywhere. But are you ready and willing to be arrested? Christian dissidents are in opposition to official Antichrist, anti-Bible teachings. In Birmingham, England, a woman was arrested, charged for silent prayer near an abortion clinic. The photograph shows her leaning up against a building across the street. Not in the street, just but leaning up against the building. Praying silently, no banners, no posters, nothing, just sitting there, standing there in prayer. And she was arrested. You don't want to know what's happening in Canada. And it's coming here. I want to end where I started out for this week. I was going to do the Ten Commandments. <laughs> but I'm going to end with the ninth one. That was the main one. You shall not bear false witnesses against your neighbor. Keep this. That's the ninth commandment. Obedience, then, is to speak truth in love, but boldly stand as a dissident. In other words, if you allow some lie to continue, you are bearing false witness. 
You stand there beside of someone and they say, well, personally, as far as I'm concerned, God's dead and I can prove it. What's your next statement is prove it. I'm really interested in your answer here. Now, you pick your positions. You let the Holy Spirit lead you. But silence is what? Silence is bearing false witness when you're being silent about a lie about somebody, someplace, or some teaching of the Bible. It's bearing false witness. I'm going to end this. You're going to like this ending. We stay on Facebook unless they take us off. We have permission to use this. Jonathan Kahn boldly speaks truth to the president of the United States. And I want to thank Bill for sending this to me. And this is the message of this church as well to President Biden and any who want to hear this message. Um, I didn't hear a lot of protests from a lot of pastors across the country. Given Jonathan Kahn has a better platform than you by which he can say what he thinks. And he says what God's word says. I like what he has to say here. And I hope it will be an encouragement for you. Because he's standing up for biblical truth. He's taking the best platform he has available to him to tell that truth. Congratulations to Jonathan. How many of you just feel like you're a nobody? Don't show hands. <laughs> but I was in a meeting on Wednesday and something was said. And, and I prefaced what I was getting ready to say by saying, I'm a nobody from a little church in Georgia. But one day I'm going to stand before somebody. And that frightens me. That keeps me, hopefully. So, I think Jonathan says it best, right? Not only Mr. President, but the entire Democratic Congress. And 18 Republicans also voted for that bill. Keep that in mind as well. Father God, we love you. We thank you for who you are. Lord, for those that are here and those that are sitting at home that have heard this message and messages today. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would build your church. That you would draw them to you. And that they would be drawn to the Father. And that they would see Jesus Christ as the person and the only one that has been able to go to a cross and pay for every one of their sins. That they have been rejected, but they have been accepted by God if they would only turn their eyes upon you and seek you. So, Lord, we ask that these hearing this today will seek to have a fellowship. If that be a local church, so be it. But may it be one that is standing for truth, preaching and teaching the word of God. Lord, those that are doing that today, I would ask you, Father God, just to uplift them today. Let us know that we're being heard, not by people, but we're being heard by you, Lord. Give us the peace that we can only have in you. We pray in Jesus Christ. And amen. Anyone else have anything to add to that? As any questions about that?